there's a good reason the checkout lines are so tight. Let's say you're waiting there, and after you take one more look at your cart, you see there are certain things you don't really need, so it would be better not to buy them. So you're looking around trying to find a spot to leave them somewhere aside. Good luck with that. Checkout lines are designed like this so you can't find a place to put these items down. So you make the subconscious decision to buy all these things after all. Take a closer look at your cart before getting there or just stick to the list to avoid this. Also, the checkout line is probably the most tempting part of the supermarket. All those candies, shiny magazines, gums, and cool gadgets are there to grab your attention while you're patiently waiting your turn. Many people just automatically grab something from there while waiting, even though they weren't planning to buy it in the first place. Have you ever seen someone in front of the supermarket washing the shopping carts? Of course not, because no one does it. Yep, shopping carts are really filthy. So many people touch them during just one day, let alone this whole time they have been in the store. It would be good to wash your hands every time after shopping, or you can wipe the handle down before using it. You'll see some stores have wipes right next to the entrance. Spraying water makes fruits and vegetables look pretty. Plus, it adds weight to them, so you might end up paying more for them. These are the two actual reasons why workers spray them with water. No one does it to keep them fresh. Plus, spraying water won't keep fruit and vegetables fresh. It will just make them rot more quickly. Spraying water on them or not, wash all the fresh fruits and vegetables you bought. You know how you sometimes like to pick up a pear or a peach to see if they're ripe enough and put them back down if not? Well, you're not the only one who thought of that, so stick to washing your hands every single time you come back from the store. Check out the packages of fruits, vegetables, and meat you're buying. Even though you have to be prepared, you won't be able to see everything that's inside. One Reddit user took a picture of bacon so others can see what the visible slice looks like versus the rest of those packed in a way you can't see them well. Another user shared an interesting trick to help them feel how much meat a pack of bacon actually has. And this only works at low temperatures. So the fatty bits become stiffer before the meat does when the bacon is cold enough. That way, if you pick a cold pack of bacon that's kind of stiff and hard to bend, you have one full of fat. If you feel it's kind of squishy and you're able to fold it in half relatively easy, it means there's more meat and less fat. Here's one more interesting Reddit catch. It's not a hack supermarkets use. It's more like a bonus on your vegetables. A whole new ecosystem on your veggies. It's for those situations when you want some extra flavors, but are running out of ideas. Fish you buy in supermarkets is often mislabeled. When it comes to meat, it's pretty lax with testing because you can tell the difference between, let's say, pork and beef relatively easily. But it's harder to do it with fish. Some studies showed that a third of all fish on the market is not labeled properly. That means some expensive pieces such as salmon are replaced by other fish that look similar. The majority of that counterfeit fish is safe to eat, but there are some of it, such as snake mackerel, that can cause not so pleasant stomach issues. Don't trust expiration dates so blindly either. Of course, there's a certain number of weeks milk can remain good after packaging, but supermarket meat departments are a different story. They do their labeling there with their own devices, which means regulations are not that strict. In other words, if an item is about to expire, but it still looks good, supermarkets can simply put a new label on it. That means they can extend the expiration date for a couple of days, sometimes even more than a week. If possible, look for the food at the time when it first comes to the shelves, or find some trusted butcher nearby. But if you stumble upon meat or something else that's about to expire or has already passed the due date, you can negotiate for a better price. Just show the product to the staff, and in most cases, they'll be willing to lower the price. They'll probably have to put it on the discount anyway, so this way, it's just easier for them and better for you. So always check the expiration date. 
Pay attention to this because supermarkets mostly won't get shut down after they fail an inspection. Inspections are way more focused on restaurants, so you're more likely to hear a restaurant closed because they fail health standards rather than a grocery store. So going to a small local bakery instead of buying supermarket bread and generally trying smaller local businesses might not be a bad idea. These guys usually care a lot about their reputation. This hack grocery stores use is not so gross, but it's still worth knowing. They mostly place expensive stuff at eye level. Most of the population is right-handed, so most of us do the same movement reaching for stuff we want to buy. So things that will bring supermarkets the most profit are right there, at eye level, front and center. Sometimes, there will even be some additional colorful markups on these more expensive products that will make you buy them before even checking the others. So, look to the side and look up to find better deals. Don't just grab the first thing that gets into your visual field. Also, things that are geared towards kids are placed a little bit lower, so they're at eye level too. One Redditor shared a photo from one supermarket where they had to cut out the bottom of laundry baskets so shoplifters don't fill them up and walk out. Another commentator said this is just a display version. That way, if you want to make a purchase, employees will go to the back room and send the basket to the registers for when you're ready to pay. It feels so exciting when you're going through those colorful newspaper inserts with special discounts. But they don't make these to save you money. Their main purpose is to make you buy things you don't really need, but you'll get them anyway because you believe they're on sale. Double check all the coupons you're about to use. Sometimes the special price they advertise is the same as the regular price without the coupon. Bulk buying deals might sound great at first, but they can be a trap. First, the price difference between individual products and those in bulk doesn't have to be that big. And you might end up buying way more stuff than you need. That means that either you'll buy too much so the items might go bad before you have a chance to use them, or you might eat and drink way more than you usually would. And neither of these options sounds good, and it's definitely not saving money. For example, one Reddit user noticed there's a pack of four blades instead of five, even though the price is the same and they haven't even changed the packaging. Check the prices of packages considering their weights too. One Redditor shared a photo of their catch, which might be tasty, but also quite expensive considering the size of the package. They usually shop for groceries online, and since this week was pretty stressful, they were tired and didn't check how tiny this block of cheese was. Well, it's a nice Sunday afternoon and you're shopping at your regular grocery store when you stumble upon a bloated package in the fresh produce aisle. You check the product information. It seems well within its expiration date. Then why the unusual shape, you may wonder? The answer is not always straightforward. For some types of fresh products, such as meat, fish, or seafood, sometimes even salads and cheese, scientists came up with something called MAP, or Modified Atmosphere Packaging, to ensure that these types of products with a relatively short shelf life stay fresh for as long as possible. A combination of gases is introduced in the packaging. It happens even before the product reaches your local grocery store. A French professor at the Montpelier School of Pharmacy stumbled upon this method after he noticed that fruits tend to stay fresh for longer periods of time in low oxygen storage conditions. The types of gases in MAPS packaging can vary from product to product, but the main idea is to replace or reduce the content of oxygen. It's generally replaced with either nitrogen or carbon dioxide. Keep in mind that just because a bloated bag mm. of salad is within its expiration date, it doesn't mean it's always safe to eat. The gases inside the bag may very well be there for their own purpose, but they can also be a sign that the product is spoiled. That's why the best course of action when shopping would be to check if the product is not expired. 
If it's still within the day, Mm -hmm. check for any unusual odors or damage to Mm -hmm. the packaging. If something seems off, it's best not to risk it. You can reach out to any of the store staff if you have any questions or concerns. Most supermarkets these days have a layout which allows for a logical shopping order, like buying non-perishable items first, then adding refrigerated or frozen products. Fruits and vegetables should come last since you won't want them at the bottom of your shopping cart. Nobody likes a squished tomato. While I'm on the subject of fruits and veggies, try to get them earlier in the morning if possible. Veggies that have been sitting out all day may lose some of their shape and texture, while others may be a bit wilted away. Quick tip on waste management, never buy more produce than you intend to use in a week. Most fruits and vegetables don't even last that long, so it's best not to give in to cravings. Shopping on a full stomach might help with that as well, just as much as going shopping with a pre-made list of things you need to buy. Thoroughly inspecting the package of every product might save you some hustle later as well. Refrigerated products need to feel cold to the touch, while frozen ones need to be solid and with no sign of leakage. When you get home, make sure you refrigerate all the necessary items as soon as possible. Generally, they shouldn't be out of the refrigerator for more than two hours. Otherwise, their quality won't stay the same. Buying potted herbs from the grocery store may not be the first thing on your list, but it's surely something to consider. Not only are they available for a fraction of the cost, but they're also easy to grow and take care of. Just picture a nice herb garden right there on your balcony or even in the kitchen. Wouldn't that be nice? You'll always have fresh basil to top a mouth-watering pasta dish. Since you're still at the grocery store, pick up some coffee filters while you're at it. You may not have a machine at home that actually uses filters, but there are a lot more things you can use them for around the house. They can be used for straining liquids, safely stacking delicate china in your cupboards, or even polishing windows, or shoes for that matter. If your favorite fruits and vegetables are on sale, but buying large quantities would mean they go to waste, consider freezing them. You can stock up on items for smoothies, especially for the colder season when there are limited options for fresh fruits. And don't just grab the first thing on the shelf, especially if it's likely to go bad quickly. Stores restock their produce following a first-in, first-out layout. So the items at the back of the shelf will always be a tad bit fresher. The same goes for tea if you prefer it to coffee. Switch to buying loose-leaf tea, and you'll not only reduce the cost, you'll also be able to make your own homemade tea blends. Loose-leaf tea also has a stronger flavor than tea sold in tea bags. As for the other household stuff, stock up on items such as light bulbs, paper towels, or batteries. Chances are you'll always be needing at least Mm -hmm. one of these items, so it's best to buy them in larger quantities when on sale. They never go to waste, and let's face it, it's always annoying when you run out of batteries at home and your TV remote stops working. Hey, tell me about it. Try to reduce the number of times you go to the grocery store to buy just one item. It's inefficient, and most likely, you'll end up buying things that you don't actually need. Uh, That shopping list starts to make a lot more sense now, doesn't it? Another list worth making, the one containing whatever you have in the fridge. Try to create such a list at least twice a week. Meal planning for at least a week in advance will also help you reduce impulse buying. If you already know what you'll want for dinner on Wednesday, why add anything else to the cart if it's unnecessary? At the same time, start getting creative with your leftovers. There's no need for them to go to waste when you can mix and match or add some additional herbs and flavors to spice them up. Store leftovers in transparent containers for added visibility, and don't be afraid to set out a leftover day during the week. It's also nice to look at them as ingredients rather than leftovers. Use extra leftover pasta or steamed vegetables for a frittata or an (laughs) omelette. Blend together cooked vegetables with some tomatoes to create a pasta sauce. Put together some wraps for the next day's lunch with anything from leftover cooked rice to meat and vegetables. Or, if you're really looking for the easiest method to save leftovers, you can always turn them into soup. Last night's vegetable side dish can turn into a wholesome lunch if you simply add a can of broth and blend it all together. Even a two-day-old loaf of bread can't be salvaged if you cut it diagonally, sprinkle the slices with some herbs and olive oil, and pop them in the oven for a couple of minutes. 
you'll then have yourself some nice homemade croutons for that previously mentioned soup. A little label know-how never hurt anyone either. Be on the lookout for ingredients you've never heard of or those you can't pronounce. An item that usually has more than 5 ingredients listed on the packaging should be avoided. Even the way you carry your groceries in the supermarket can affect how and what you buy. If you prefer baskets to shopping carts, you're more prone to impulse searches. That's what a study published by the Journal of Marketing Research claims. It happens due to the effort you put in actually carrying the items around. Choosing a shopping cart will most likely make you comfortable enough to browse through enough products and read labels thoroughly. When your grocery list is not too big, go for the self-checkout aisle if available. Studies have shown that impulse purchases are lowered by up to 32% if you actually scan your own items on the way out. That's because the regular checkout line is specially designed to keep you from letting go of any items you might have reconsidered buying. There's literally nowhere you can put down your undesired products, outside of your grocery cart. And if there's anyone else waiting in line behind you, good luck sliding out. The food arrangement on the shelves can also pose a threat to both your budget and your habits. Since people are more inclined to buy the items they see first, the most expensive products are placed at eye level, and the budget options are placed on the top and bottom shelves. Take your time and scan your aisles of interest. You'll be surprised to see that most items placed on higher or lower shelves are often not only more cost-effective, but also less packed with additives or artificial flavor. Hey, be careful. It's a jungle in there. Supermarket shopping carts usually look simple, but they hide tons of secrets. They often shake when moving and sometimes even make loud clinking noises. But that's not because they're old or of bad quality. This is a psychological trick. The faster you walk, the louder the noise the cart makes. Trying to produce as little noise as you can, you start walking more slowly. And, of course, you can't but pay attention to all that yummy stuff on the shelves. And if some of it ends up in your cart, well, you can't blame yourself, right? Another trick supermarkets use to make you buy more is the size of carts. They're usually extra large, and you'll subconsciously take more products to fill all that space. Now, have you ever noticed that shopping cart wheels often wobble? Even worse, there's almost always that one wobbly wheel that makes it impossible to steer the cart, and you have to go back to switch it. Shopping carts have caster wheels. Those are mounted on the bottom of large objects so that you can move them around more easily. But over time, casters develop flutter it causes the wheel to swivel back and forth. This is kinda inconvenient since such flutter can make your cart move in an unwanted direction. Interestingly, flutters are less likely to occur when you're moving slowly. So, can it be that supermarkets don't repair fluttering wheels because they want customers to move around at a more leisurely pace? Just a thought. The black lines on the basketball make it easier to use. They're actually grooves helping you to handle the ball. And since players need to move around the court while bouncing the ball, control is crucial. Those pebbled dots that cover the outside of the ball serve the same purpose. Do you have an eye for detail? Then you might have noticed a strange looking notch at the bottom of some plastic bottles. It's called a deco lug, and it helps to indicate the placement of a bottle sticker or some artwork. Without it, stickers on mass-produced plastic bottles won't look as pretty and symmetrical as they usually do. Most plastic coffee cup lids have a tiny hole in them. When you take a sip from a cup closed with a lid, the air pressure inside the cup drops. And some air from the outside tries to push into the cup. The tiny hole in the lid allows the air to enter. It also helps the liquid go out of the main, bigger hole more smoothly. Plus, the smaller hole acts as an exit for steam gathering inside the cup, which prevents the lid from melting. Those of you who have a ceiling fan, do you know it can move in more than one direction? One mode is for the summer, the other for the winter. When the weather is hot, ceiling fans should move counterclockwise. This makes them pull the warm air up and push the cold air down and the clockwise winter mode pushes the warm air down and helps the cool air rise. 
Do you still use a knife to remove strawberry stems? But this way, you throw away a lot of the stuff you could otherwise eat. Instead of a knife, try a regular drinking straw. Insert one end of the straw into the bottom of the strawberry and push it gently all the way through. The straw will pop the stem out. A little groove on the bottom of a cup lets cool air get underneath it, which saves the glass or ceramics from cracking when a scorching beverage heats it up. And when you place cups upside down in the dishwasher, the groove stops water from gathering in the cup's bottoms. A button on the back of a collar of a button-down shirt is there to prevent your tie from sticking out. And the small loop on the back can be used to hang the shirt without wrinkling it. Barcode readers scan not black, but white lines. The reader emits rays of light that fall on the product's barcode. When it happens, the white areas reflect this light, while the dark zones absorb it. The reflected light helps the device to read the code and give you some information about the product. White is the most popular color for painting aircraft. It reflects sunlight most effectively, and planes don't heat up too much. All kinds of cracks or dents are much more visible on the white background. It means issues can be spotted and repaired as fast as possible. And finally, it costs less to buy white-colored airplanes because it's the color they have at birth. Some keyboards come with little legs. Thanks to them, you can tilt your keyboard and see which keys you're hitting. But keep in mind that a flat keyboard doesn't make your wrist so tired. And if you can touch type, you don't need to look at the keyboard anyway. Let's say you're driving on a highway. When it's time to make an exit, pay attention to highway signs. If the sign for your destination is on the left, your exit will be on the left too, and vice versa. You might have noticed that the sides of some cotton pads have different textures. One surface is firmer and more absorbent. It's supposed to be used with nail polish remover. The other side is way finer and softer. You can use it to remove makeup. You often see that cups on small tubes are hollow on top with a little spike inside. The purpose of this spike is to break the foil sticker sealing the tube. The neck of the tube fits right in the hole and the spike breaks the seal. No need to struggle trying to tear the tiny foil seal off with your fingers or even your teeth. The hole near the rim of your bathroom sink is there to prevent overflows. Thanks to it, all excess water goes into the siphon. Plus, it helps your sink drain faster. The hole gives air gathered in the siphon room to escape. Let's say you're reading a paper book, but when you decide to take a break, you realize you don't have a bookmark. Is leaving a dog ear your only choice? Nope, that's what the dust jacket is for. Turns out, providing you with the information about the book and its author isn't its only purpose. Most kitchen shears have metal plier-like teeth in the middle, between the handle grips. They can help you crack nuts, crab shells, and other tough products. You can also open jars and bottles or remove herb stems with their help. The bubbles in your soda push the straw up, but you can keep it from rising by pushing it through the hole in the metal pull ring. The correct way to break off a piece of Toblerone chocolate bar is by pushing the pointy side inwards towards the rest of the bar. Bottles have long necks so that your drink stays cool longer. Hold the neck, not the bottle itself and your drink won't warm up. Place a wooden spoon across the top of a pot with pasta. It'll prevent the bubbles from escaping. Once they touch the spoon's water-repelling surface, they'll immediately retreat back into the pot. If you turn over a Tupperware container, you'll see lots of symbols. They'll inform you whether the container is dishwasher, microwave, or freezer safe. You're also likely to find out how you should recycle the thing. The black grate on microwaves is called a Faraday shield. It keeps the electromagnetic energy inside the device. The grate also speeds up the heating process, and it can block phone signals too. If you don't remember which side of your car the gas tank is on, check the fuel gauge on the dashboard. There must be a little gas pump with an arrow pointing to the left or right. It indicates the side you should choose before pulling up towards the pump.